Greetings and welcome. My name is Aaron Craig with Beyond Us Games, and in this video, we're going to be going over reading and writing to the file system that Game Maker Studio provides. This is going to be specifically in my inventory project, but if you're using DS grids at all, or you just want to have an idea of how saving and loading works, then this will be great for you. So, what we're going to be using is an INI file or an any file, however you pronounce it. So they are structured like this, and they are human readable files that you can edit both uh, within code and you can also just open up the file if you edit it, unless it's encrypted. And that is up to you. You can encrypt files so players can't change their data, or you can leave it open if that's something that you wanted to do as well. So you've got different sections. You've got sections here, which are uh, like overheads, and then you've got the keys inside of there, and then the values. I think this actually does a really good job of showing what an any file looks like. And we're going to be making one, but ours is going to look a little bit different. It's going to look kind of like this, but we're just going to have one key and one extremely long value. And that's because we're going to be using a built-in function for DS grids called DS grid write and DS grid read. So these are great functions when you have a data structure because it will automatically convert it for you to a string that then you can save and load and it's already encrypted, it's saved, no one can change it, and it's a really great way of saving all your data and loading it up really quick. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into it. And for the most part, you're going to want to actually stick to uh, the functions that they give you here because they've actually got really good examples here. So we're going to be pulling the example pretty much directly from this DS grid read and the DS grid write. The way we're going to do that first though is we're going to come into our game we're going to make a script. I'm going to create a new script and this is going to be called SCR save inventory. We're just going to say saves the inventory to file and where we're going to call this at is inside of our object inside of obj inventory on the key press of I. So where you save and load your inventory can vary greatly depending on the kind of game you're making. If you have save points in your game, then you'd probably want to only save and load at those. But if you're making a game where you can save and load anytime, or it's constantly saving and loading in the background, then these are things that you'll want to do constantly. You could maybe put them on a timer for every 30 seconds to a minute. What I'm gonna do is actually put the save at the end of the destroying of the inventory. So visualizing it like this, every time the player loads an inventory by pressing I, they get what they have. But inside of here, they can actually do things that change that. They can trash an item, they can use items, they can alter their inventory. So what I'm gonna do is every time they close it, I'm then going to save it and I'm only going to load it once at the beginning of the game, but I'm gonna save it every single time that they do anything inside of their inventory. This will guarantee that it's always up to date, and if at any time it crashes or they quit, it will come back and it will work just fine. Now that might not be what you wanna do specifically, and if not, then you would just put this script save inventory in a different location. So here, inside of this else statement, we are destroying the inventory and the buttons that go along with it. So I'm just gonna call SCR save inventory. And that's all we need to do because we're gonna fill up the script in a little bit. So we'll save that. And now let's go into the script. We're gonna look at this. So we have DS grid read and we also have DS grid write. Both of these actually use the examples uh, really well so we're going to pull from those so i'm actually going to copy and paste right here now let's go over some of these the ini open is to open an ini slash any file the way that this works though is if there is no file then it's it will make one only if you try to write to it so you can basically say game open this file called saves. But if there is no file called saves, then nothing will happen. Now, if you open a file and then you try to write to it, you say, open this file, it's not there, so nothing happens. But then you say, save this data, like level five, 25 experience, whatever, 
then it will create that file and save it for you. So you always open the file with this function, and then at the end, you always close it with ini close. And that's very important because you can only have one open file at a time. So you must open and close each file sequentially as you access it. So they are now going to do that, but we're gonna give it a more name, a more recognizable name for us. I'm gonna say inventory.ini. And you need that extension there, otherwise it's not gonna know what kind of file it is and you're gonna run into problems. So we are then gonna use ini write string, which is actually the function we were looking at at the beginning. So here we are going to write the section, the key, and the value that we want to give it. So sections, keys, values. To do that, we want to give it the section title. Now for our inventory, we're only gonna have one, although you could very easily make a huge INI file if you wanted to, and this could just be a part of it. But for what we're doing is we're just saving and loading the inventory. So I'm just gonna say the section name is named items. And this is going to be zero, this is the key, We'll just say player. It can be any key. It doesn't matter what it's named. Really, it's just what you put in needs to be the same that you read out. So whatever makes sense to you, go ahead and put there. And then the actual value that we're writing comes from this function, dsgridwrite. And the function that we're gonna, or the grid we're gonna use is a global variable called player inventory. So that is going to take all the trouble of the grid that we have, all the items, everything we have in it, and put it into a string, which is really cool. Uh, it does a lot of work for us, makes it very simple. So I'm actually gonna save this and run the game and show you that right away, we've actually already saved. So if I open this up, so far nothing has happened. But if I close it, it is now saved to the file system. And the way that we know that is we can go in and actually physically look at the INI file. And we know that because it's actually saved to the file and we can go in and look at it. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up where that is. And you can find yours under your local disk, users, your name, app data, and then local. If you're on a Mac, it's different and I'm not exactly sure where it is. So if you know, if you find it, definitely leave a comment below, that would be great. Um, it's gonna be in a folder with the name of your project. So this is Awesome Inventory System Part 6. I'm gonna load that up, and you can see right here, inventory.ini. And you can load this up with uh, Notepad, WordPad, or if you have Visual Studio Code, something like that, you can. I'm just gonna open up in Notepad. And you can see here that our section title is Items, our key is Player, and then it saves this huge long string. And if you change anything in this string, it will not load, it will not work properly. So you wanna make sure that nothing in there gets changed by the player, uh, and otherwise you're gonna have issues. But this is our entire inventory. Now all we have to do is read it, which is actually pretty easy as well. So if we close this out and we go to help, we can actually just search for DS grid read. This function's right here, and it tells you what it does. You are uh, giving it an index, so the grid, that's normal. Any, any DS grid function basically uses the, the first one to be the grid. Then the string to read in. Now the string is a little more confusing. Uh, what we are actually gonna be reading in is the key that we've saved there. So this is reading in just one key at a time. And when you read in, you need to read it in with a specific INI function called INI read string. So I'm actually just gonna copy this entire example. And I'm gonna go into the game, into OBJ inventory. And on the create event, this is where I'm gonna put it. Because the inventory should only be ever made once. Our inventory is persistent and it's made in the beginning of the game. So we only ever need to load the inventory one time. Now, we still wanna go through this entire process. We wanna make the inventory, but then we wanna come down. We wanna to try to read from file. So I'm gonna paste this in. So 
grid, we can take this first section out. We've already made the grid. It's called player inventory. Now, we want to open it up. Now, a good coding practice that I would recommend, which we're going to do right now, is putting your file names inside of variables. Because anytime you are writing something inside of a string, it's super easy to mess it up. Even if it's just in two places, which for now it is, but it might be in more places later. So let's actually go ahead and make a couple global variables here. So we're going to say file name. And then we're going to also say uh, key name. And here, let's fill those up. So let's say file name equals inventory.ini. And then key name <coughs> is going to equal player. And then let's go and put those in inside of our script. So we have file name and key name. That way we can't mess these up. And if we ever need to read them again later, we can without worrying about mistyping them. So we've got file name, key name, and then we need one more for section name. Let's put that right here. And the section name is items. Okay, that fills that in. Let's go back to our inventory. Now, <clears throat> let's put it in here. So file name. We know it's going to work because it's right there. We are now calling DS grid read. So we're reading a saved DS grid. And the grid we need to read is player inventory. And we need to use the function ini read string because it's in an ini file. So it will figure out exactly where we need to go by giving it the section, section name, and by giving it the key, key name. And then this is the default value. So we're just going to leave that with zero. So now if we run our game, and now if we load up our inventory, We've actually got twice as many items as we should because we are reading from the inventory, we're filling it up, we're adding it to it, and then we're actually adding all those items manually as well. So we are actually saving and loading, but it's not very smart saving and loading. So we need to change one thing. After we close the file, we want to check to see if we actually loaded anything up. So if we did, so we want to say if DS grid get so we want to pass in our grid and we want to check the first index zero zero and if that's equal to zero because that is the default value of an empty grid and it's also the default value that we're passing in here so either way if it's an empty grid or if there's no inventory at all it's going to come back as zero fill that in highlight these press tab and now it's going to check to see if it is empty, if there's an empty grid, then add the items. Otherwise, don't add these items because that would be giving the player more items than we want. So to check this, I'm going to load this up and delete the inventory. And I'm going to press F5 to run it. And we'll see that our inventory should be normal. Just one of everything, 27 gold coins. Yep, that all makes sense. So we've got that. Now if I come in here, and I trash a lot of this stuff and get rid of it. So now we just have four items. I closed it so it saves. I back out, I run it again. It will load the inventory, see that it has some items and load in those items without giving us the extras. And that's perfect. And if we move around, we can see here, we can add in a sword and a red berry. I'll save the inventory, exit the game, load it up again. And there they are. Now, none of this is set to be persistent, so you could save that in a different file and only spawn those things if they haven't been picked up already. But that's something for a different time. But it's also the same idea. It's saving and loading data, which is now working. And if you're not doing it with the DS grid, you just don't need to use the DS grid read and write functions. You just use the INI read and write functions because you've made an INI file. So that's it. That's really all there is to reading and loading, uh, reading and writing to your games. The 
app data saves it here. So you have to go in and find it if you ever want to delete it or do things like that. And there are also more functions. You can actually create entire directories. You can create folder structures if you have a lot of different files. And I believe it is good practice to keep save files to what they are related about. So if you had a inventory file, you'd want to just have inventory in there. You wouldn't also want to have player experience and the achievements they've gotten, stuff like that. You'd want to have individual save files for each one of those. But that's that. Hopefully that makes sense. And if you have any questions, please feel free to shout them out in the comments below and I will get back to you. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, have fun making great games and I'll talk to you later.